Just kidding. Y'all, we need to talk. This is the comment distribution on the most recent ATF rule change that seeks to eliminate private transfers in the United States. You need to drop what you're doing, even if it means stopping watching my video, and go over there and leave a comment. Come back afterwards. Please, please come back. Now, I know there's already people typing, I'm not going to comment because it's a waste of time, and they don't care, and they don't listen anyway, and I'm too busy listening to stories of my wife from her date with another man last night. I guarantee you they will be there, even though this video is dedicated to why it is critically important that we turn that around and turn that around in a hurry. So real quick, I'm going to take a break now, pay the bill so I don't have to break the video up in the middle. So give me just a few seconds and I'll be right back. Kentucky Anti Gun Works is best known for their research and development into lubrication technology. They use their enhanced reliability oil on a daily basis, but they've started to move into some other stuff, like, for instance, they recently came out with their slings, equipped with a fast adjust that allows you to get out of it really quickly. And they've also recently released their minimalist quick-release sling retainers. KGW offers VSO subscribers a discount, and you can find that information over at the affiliates page. Special thanks to them for making today's video possible. The first thing I'll say is that there is a general disconnect between people's expectation of what is going to happen and the reality of what's going to happen. Does the government care about your needs, wants, and desires? No, absolutely not. They don't give a f about you. They never have and they never will. So get outside your mind the idea that you and a hundred thousand of your closest friends are going to leave comments uh, opposing the rule and it's just going to go away. That's not the way that it works. Well, the anti-gun organizations are automating it, of course. And John Crump over at Ammo Land has a full story on it. I won't steal the man's thunder. You can go over there and uh, go through his evidence yourself, and I'll have it linked in the pinned comment. So what's the end game here? I mean, what's the point? They want to be able, and they've shown you this multiple times, they want to be able to say, look how popular this is. The vast majority of people who commented are in support of this. The, look how much the American people want universal background checks. That's what they want to be able to say. And it is up to you to take that from them. The reason they want to be able to say that is because they know they're going to end up in court. Let me be clear. They are going to ignore your comment. They are going to implement this, and this will go into effect, at least briefly, but they know that they're going to end up in court, and they know that that's where the comments actually matter. When it's being litigated, when it goes before judges and they start tearing into it, and they look at what people are actually saying about the proposed rule change, that's when it actually matters. If you don't believe me, Listen to some of the oral arguments from the pistol brace fiasco. Um, do you have a thought on this sort of quick exchange I was having about any best authority that this isn't a logical outgrowth from the proposed rule in light of the 270,000 comments that said this is already too ad hoc, this is too discretionary? How would it possibly fit into that line of authority that the final rule here isn't a logical outgrowth if essentially what they did was take out the worksheet? for evaluating the intent question. And so in the face of that circumvention and that confusion, ATF decided to issue the rule. And the rule uh, primarily does two things. So first, it says... Uh, well, they promulgated a proposed rule, got almost 300,000 comments, and then two years later it comes out the final rule. So would you agree that this, this is a rule, that it is a substantive rule, or are you going to really stand on the hill if this is an interpretive rule? Uh, ATF had this proposed worksheet idea, got a lot of comments about how that was overly complicated, overly confusing, uh, and ultimately decided to move away from it. And, and I, mean, I don't think there's anything problematic about ATF uh, before it tries to inform the public of how it understands the statute to solicit input from the public that's most affected. Can you think of another time when the government has put a proposed rule through notice and comment when it didn't have to? Uh, so I think the bump stocks rule uh, is another ATF rule that, uh, again, we think is an interpretive rule. Um, and we have argued as interpreted. I mean, so I think that's certainly one example. Bump stock rule is very problematic for you to rely on. I mean, considering Cargill. Some of them, uh, ATF said, would 
uh, transform a pistol into a short-barreled rifle. Some of them ATFs. It says a firearm with a pistol brace is not a rifle. That, that, that's, what it, that's what it says. I mean, is, are, are you now backing away from the accuracy of that 2019 statement? Or, or I mean, I think it depends. Am I, I, I don't think I'm quoting it out of context. Look, people, it takes absolutely no time to do this. And the time that you've spent watching this video or in the time that you will spend commenting on this video, which I greatly appreciate, it does absolutely boost this video up in the algorithm. And I think this is one, and this is not me being selfish and going for ad revenue or anything like that. I make very little off of ad revenue. I need this video to get out to as many people as possible. And you need this video to get out to as many people as possible because we need to whip our community up to get over there and get this boosted because this is like the holy grail to them. They've been seeking for decades trying to get this thing and they're pretty close to implementing it the question is can they get it to stick and if we don't oppose it then there be will be fewer arguments to be made at the court level when it finally gets there you guys have the power like i said it takes very little time to do this and if you don't know what to say it's okay start with that you oppose it and then the next thing that you should talk about is stick to the facts. Why is this illegal? Why is this unconstitutional? Why is this expressly prohibited? Those types of points. Do not use a form letter. It needs to be unique because the software that is currently being used to uh, analyze these comments can detect whether they are form letters. And if you go read that article that I told you out over at uh, Ammoland, they analyze them, and yeah, they're basically all the same. They are a form letter. To somewhat of their credit, if you look uh, in the most recent situation with the pistol brace uh, final rule, you can see that the comments on that were analyzed by the ATF to determine which, how, what percentage of them were form letters and which percentage of them were not. And uh, the distribution there is also very interesting. Uh, we outpaced their machines quite substantially, by the way, uh, in that situation. The last thing that I'll close with today is I guarantee you in the comments, you're going to see some crap about belligerencies. And what I have to say about that is <laughs> you are too lazy. You don't even have to pick up a pen. You are currently using a screen. All you have to do is push like three buttons and you'll be brought to the comment field over at the National Register or the Federal Register, excuse me. And all you have to do at the baser level is say oppose, right? And you've logged a, a negative comment. If you are too lazy to do that, then you are certainly too lazy to do the other thing.